This is Steve. And this is Sean. Welcome to Acromedia's High Five. So, Steve, what are we talking about today? Uh, unified multi-language support. Oh, I thought we were just going to go multi-language, but all right. All right. Okay. Well, that is the technical name, is it not? But I did, you didn't think you were a technical person. Okay, well, thank you. <laughs> okay, um, yeah, so we're just going to go over all the multi-language stuff in mm -hmm. Drupal 8, which is way, way, way better. Um, it was one of the core initiatives of Drupal 8 to make multi-language better because um, it works in 7, but if you've had to work with it, it kind of sucks. <laughs> it's, it's really cumbersome mm -hmm. uh, to use. Um, there's, there's a ton of different modules. Um, that you need to set up. It, like most of it doesn't come with core. There's all this config. It's managed in like four different places, and a whole bunch of that has been fixed in Drupal 8. Um, so we're just going to go an overview of, of some of the core features for that and kind of talk about it a bit. And if you've ever dealt with multi-language, this should really resonate. Um, Steve, you want me to just keep rambling? You got. You, you, got I, you know what? I have nothing to say yet. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, the first part uh, that's pretty cool is um, language updates are actually automatically downloaded uh, for Drupal 8. So what that means is anytime anyone in the community contributes um, translations back, um, they get uh, moved up to what's uh, localize.drupal.org. Um, and so then your site will actually automatically pull those back down. And there's actually also an optional thing you can do where any translations you do, you can contribute back. And so anyone who's building a multilingual site can contribute their translations up. Um, and then you, everyone else can automatically pull those down. Um, so even if, you know, say a language only has, you know, 60% support when you start, um, it can get more and more support as it goes along, and you don't have to do anything to do that. You don't have to download any packs. It will just automatically improve the language support. Um, so that's pretty cool, especially for languages that aren't right, like, working perfectly um, out of the box, or when new features and functionality get added, um, then the language updates just come along with them automatically. So that being said, mm -hmm. um, what languages already have support? Is it like the Latin-based languages? It, uh, it's mostly Latin-based languages. It depends a little on um, uh, if there's uh, active people within that sort of community. Mm -hmm. um, like uh, one of the heads of the, uh, the, the sort of leader of the multi-language initiative for Drupal 8 is Hungarian. So the Hungarian support is really good because he, mm -hmm. he sort of fosters a lot in the community and the Hungarian community is, is quite strong there. So I think that was actually the first language to get 100% support. Okay. But now it's, it's a lot Other of than the, English. Uh, English obviously okay. is, is by default or whatever, um, but uh, Hungarian got added, and then of course a lot of the standard ones, you know, French, Spanish, German, okay. um, that kind of stuff. And then there's uh, support is coming along. I, I haven't checked the stats in the last couple of weeks, um, but there's quite a few languages that were up at 80, 90 percent. You know, um, Chinese comes along there. Portuguese might be at 100 percent now. Um, you know, a lot of the mainstream ones. Russian usually gets pretty good uptake. Um, Latin ones are good, and then and then you know ones with a big anyone with a big uh, tech community. So you know China has a big tech community. You know Japan has a decent one. Russia has a big one. Yeah. You know down in South America, Brazil has a good one. One so. thing that often kind of confuses me is when there's like a percentage of support. You know what mm -hmm. does eighty percent support or ninety percent support mean? It usually means so they would have a list of like all the total strings that need to be translated. So mm -hmm. how the translation works is like every sort of bit of text gets listed, and then you have to you provide translations for each of those. So there would be a list of okay, there's you know, 3,000, um, you know, essentially sentences or snippets of text that need to be mm -hmm. translated, you know, and so it would be 80% of those 3,000, you know, so if you have 2,500 strings translated or something like that, that's what gets you the percentage, so. And is there like a priority of items that people typically follow? Not really. I mean, people might do certain sections or depending on your language skills, they might hit certain areas. Sometimes technical pieces can be a little more difficult because it's like, okay, you know, if something's called like a node or something, you know, what is that? You know, translate into because that's kind of a Drupal specific term. So how does that get translated to you know a different language? Does it get translated? Do we just use the Drupal term? Sometimes there can be back and forth, or okay. it, it can be confusing. Whereas other stuff that are just simple, you know, sentences that that anyone with familiarity with English and the other language can translate, those can go quite quickly. Got it. Um, it also depends on on who's involved. Sometimes if there's a technical person helping with the translation, they can do that a lot faster. But oftentimes, translations are done by people who are not. Um, otherwise technical because it's someone who who isn't maybe a developer but this is a way that they can contribute to the open source community by doing translations um, especially to their local community because um, you know if you're uh, most uh, tech 
um, in general is done in English. Uh, all programming languages are in English. If stuff gets programmed in, you know, in China or in Japan, maybe China's a little bit different, but, or in Europe anywhere or something like that, the programming language is still in English. English is the primary language of all technology. Um, so there's translations to, uh, it, it, if you want to use it in your local language and help your local tech community, you have to take it from English and put it into your community. So it's, it, it's part of the sort of tech community in anywhere that doesn't speak English. Cool. Um, okay, we didn't, that was, <laughs> we've only got to one so far. Perfect. Um, How many more did you got? <laughs> only like five. Okay, so easy. We're doing great here. Um, uh, well, that actually gave us a good overview of, of a lot of it in general, though. Um, the next thing, which is a little smaller, is you don't have to have uh, English set up in your site anymore. Like English is the default language for Drupal. Um, but before in Drupal 7, Drupal 6, you, you could never remove English. You had to keep it installed. Um, you always had to have English there. And so now if you, if you don't use English, you don't speak English at all, you don't have an English version of your site, you don't have to there. If you install um, Drupal and you just pick you know, Hungarian right out of the menu and you don't want English, it won't install English for you. Um, some of the code in the back end is still going to be in English, but, you know, as far as the user interface and everything, um, nothing is going to be in English. So you don't have to have, oh, there's kind of like the English version there and mm. everything's a translation of. You can be what feels like natively in your own language. It's still being translated in the back end from English, but yeah. it appears more native. Um, so that's really cool for because lots of sites might not need to have an English version. Um, and it's sort of silly to think that you always have an English version, you know, right? If you're a Chinese site and you want to be in like Mandarin and, and Cantonese and maybe maybe you don't need English, you know, mm. so. Okay. Um, so that's uh, pretty cool. Um, the next thing is, um, and this is probably actually the biggest one, is translations are done with uh, fields. And so if you're familiar with Drupal, uh, you might have a piece of, like a content page that you add, but it will have fields inside it. It will have, you know, a title and a description, and it might have some image fields, and, you know, uh, maybe you list some specifications or something. Um, in Drupal 7 and anything before that, if you translated, uh, what you had to do is you had to make a, so say we were making a French version, you had to make a French version of the entire page. Mm. And so you had a whole new copy. It was like a, a, a separate piece of content almost. It was linked together, but everything was translated. And so certain things that doesn't make sense, right? Like an image doesn't necessarily translate. An image is, if it doesn't have text on it, it's, it doesn't matter what language it is. You know, stuff like that. Price might not translate. You know, if it's $10, it's still $10. Um, so what you can do in Drupal 8 is you do the translations just for the fields. So all you do is you say, oh, the title and the description, I'm translating those into four languages, but everything else stays the same. Okay. The ID of the node, like it's still the same entity and you're just translating bits of text. Um, and that's different than before. Way. Yeah, because before it was everything or nothing. You had okay. to do the whole thing. And so it was literally like a separate piece of content that you would edit. So you could edit one and not the other. If you linked them up, it, there was difficulties with that because it was a whole other piece of content. Whereas now it's just translated text within the same entity so you don't have to do you know multiple menus that link up uh, with commerce there was a problem when you were trying to translate it was hard to do because uh, that would mean you had multiple versions of the same SKU which would be confusing because mm -hmm. it would be like okay you have a French SKU maybe a German SKU is that what kind of what you're saying yeah but but you don't really like the product was just in one language. one language but your description of the product was in three different languages or whatever and so there could be confusion there because you didn't I really see. want three copies but you had to make three copies and, and that then, was a limitation before so you're, you're working with three SKUs when in fact it is only one SKU it is only one product yeah but you would have three which would show up differently in reports or you'd have mm -hmm. to sort of combine them together you, you had to treat them as if they were three products when they were really just one product that you wanted to talk about three different and ways. that's finally fixed yes Got it. and that took like a reorganization of sort of the entire way that multi-language which is handled. Um, there was some field stuff done with optional modules in Drupal 7, but this is actually the core way to do it is all at the field level now, um, which is very cool. And it also means you don't have to do duplicates. So like I said, images or something like that, you might attach images. Need one. Um, Rather than yeah, and, and and you would have literally like three, five. You know, if you had a bunch of languages, mm. you would have that many copies of all the images. And so, if you went in and changed the image, you had to change it five times or something. Now you just change it once. Nice. And you don't have to store five copies of it either, which you had because it, it treated those like completely separate things. Mm -hmm. And so, from a maintenance standpoint, it was a pain. Um, hit one more. Yeah, we'll hit we'll hit uh, one more. I talked a bit about everything being in core, so that's good. Um, the last cool thing about multi language um, in Drupal eight is that. It's, you used to change it in like 
three or four different places like stuff that was in the interface was in was in one location and and stuff that was like kind of interface but also like the titles of content types and stuff could be sometimes done in a different place and there ended up being about four different places where you could edit content. There's just one now. Like, um, you just go to like, here's all my strings that I want. You mm -hmm. can just export those. You can translate all the strings. That's it. It's all in one place. It doesn't matter oh, nice. what it is or where it is. So like, this is all done it, within the user interface. You can, you can do it with, you can either export it or yeah. you can do it right within the user interface. Okay. Yes. And so that's the user interface where you can even do it in there and have it push the changes back up. So like if you want to contribute changes back to the community, you can do them entirely with your site. You just change them on your own site and then you just have it sync back to the localization system and it will send your translations back up to everyone else. You don't have to go to another thing. You don't have to export them, move them around. You can do them with entirely. And how is this different than before? Uh, you had to... Some of it you could edit in the interface. Some of it was better to export and do through translation files. Mm -hmm. um, and even in the interface, it was in about three different places. Oh, wow. um, if you wanted to contribute it back, um, there was some sort of contrib module support that would let you, but most part you had to like submit your translation files separately. And so it was just, it was way less, that, hence the unified that, that you touted at the beginning. Yes, That's the you. unified part of it. Is I thought that was an important part into, of it. Into one set. I, in the I, terms I, of the I know you part. felt that was the key <laughs> point of it. So, you know, we talked about quite a bit in the, la in the last mm -hmm. 10 minutes here. Can you kind of give us a bit of a summary, a too long didn't read version of what you just talked yeah, about? Yeah, I mean, the, the, the biggest thing is the unified part there. It's all together. It's not 20 different add-on modules that you have to install. It's mm -hmm. not changing it in six different places. It's all built into Drupal core. It's all easy to edit in one place. It all syncs together. It It's just cleaned up together, easy to manage. It's no longer like, oh, multi-language. Oh, damn it. <laughs> like, it's, it's yeah, meant to it's, be easy. And it's so you don't just be like, oh, let's just not do it. Let's just. I hear you. It, Which it happens. Where before, it was like literally easier for people to just learn English than to like <laughs> translate your site. And so now it's like, okay, maybe we can actually just translate it instead of making like everyone who uses your site learn a new language. Right on. So. Well, if you guys have any questions about unified multi-language support, um, mm -hmm. if you want to make any comments, uh, please do so. Um, hey, we'd love if you want to subscribe. Anything you want to add? That was a bit begging, but all right, no. <laughs> cool. um, also, follow us on Facebook. Um, uh, check out our blog at acromedia.com and follow me on Twitter. Ask McCabe, right? Not even close, no. <laughs> Actually, some dick already had that. So it's like, it's like Sean M. McCabe, I think. It. So it's kind of long, but... You know, even though I joined Twitter like six years ago, it was still taken, so. Okay. <laughs>